when I met my wife in LA and she was a film school student and that's sort of how I first got into the like the connection between the, the music industry and, and film industry and, and that whole thing um, because she was working on a film and she needed music rights for the songs she was using in her film so she basically farmed that out to me and said you know you figure this out uh, I didn't know anything about that world at the time but sort of looked into it figured out the publishing the master side that kind of how that all worked. Um, did that for her, did that for a bunch of her film school friends, um, just as like, you know, an unpaid independent music supervisor, learning that part of the business. And then I went, uh, I took a class at UCLA um, that was taught by Gary Calamar. Uh, and uh, after the class was done, uh, I basically told Gary I would love to work for you. Um, Gary didn't actually need anybody right then, but he was partnered with Thomas Gulovich, um, and Thomas needed somebody. So I went to work for Thomas, uh, and I was Thomas's assistant, just uh, doing anything and everything that he needed um, for their company um, for two, maybe three years. Um, they were at the time their sort of flagship thing was Six Feet Under. They were doing, they were the music supervisors on Six Feet Under on HBO. Um, they picked up other projects too. Um, and since then, they've both gone on to do amazing things. Um, Six Feet Under was the was sort of their baby at the time, uh, and it was great. And whenever I mention Six Feet Under, people are always like, "Oh, I love the music in Six Feet Under." So it was kind of cool to be like that was that was my first gig in this area. So it was a it was an incredibly lucky one. Tom Waits is always sort of my go-to artist, uh, and there's definitely. Some of those, you know, Tom Waits' The Rain Dogs album, um, closing, I mean, any, any Tom Waits album almost. Uh, Frank's Wild Years is often the one that I pick when people ask me, like, oh, so you're into Tom Waits, what's your favorite Tom Waits album? I might say Frank's Wild Years. Um, same reason that I sort of like Tom Waits in general, like, it, it, it's a whole world in that one album. Um, it's a story and there are these characters who are sort of indelible that are created in it and the sounds are, are so rich and weird and moving um, and you know you've never heard anything like it uh, but it's also um, I don't know uh, it just it, it resonates uh, even though it's, it's completely strange um, so yeah I mean that's one that I've listened to endless times, but I mean all of his I've listened to endless times. And I mean, I feel like it's weird though to just say Tom Waits because there's so much other stuff. I mean, I'm, I love soul music, so there's a lot of those albums that have been huge for me. Um, Sam Cooke is like, if it's not Tom Waits for me, it's Sam Cooke. Um, and uh, I mean, there's there's tons more. There's there's all the Austin stuff that I started getting into. There's um, Towns Van Zant, who I love. Um, the High Low and In Between album is is fantastic, but all of his stuff is fantastic. Um, and I mean, there's stuff that doesn't fit with any of those too. There was a time when I listened to The Far Side, like on Endless Loop, uh, and that album was fantastic. First of all, I mean, the breadth of the catalog is pretty impressive. I mean, just uh, it dwarfs a lot of other catalogs that you're going to find out there. And so by virtue of just being huge, it encompasses all kinds of different stuff within it. Um, so we can cover more than, you know, more needs than I think a lot of people can cover. Um, and I think uh, it's something to keep in mind as a client too, is that there is a ton in there. And so if if you look around a little bit and listen to four or five songs, you definitely haven't gotten a sense yet of what we have. Um, and some of the people who I work with, Christina and John, they know what is in there and they can find it. And so it's always worth asking. Um, so there's the, you know, there's the size, there's the breadth of the catalog, but then also the quality of the catalog. Um, I mean, I, you know, I think that what we have put together here, what, what basically FirstCom has put together here is, you know, on a different order than what a lot of the libraries have in terms of quality. We're excited about the music first and foremost and like, you know, uh, excited about how good it is and excited about being able to deliver it to a project where it's really going to work well. Yeah.